This episode is brought to you by Omaze. Go to omaze.com slash gameranks to find out more. Hey folks, today is Friday, October 30th, 2020. Happy Halloween. It's me, your old pal, the Joker. Let's talk about the video game news that has been going on this week. It's an exciting week. There's a lot to talk about. So let's just jump in. But we got to start with some bad news, some bummer news. Let's talk about delays. The first delay of the week. It's like, it's like a weekly thing now, is Cyberpunk 2077. Yes, let's get that out of the way. A, another delay after a billion delays. I believe this is the fourth delay or so for this game. But don't fret, my friends. If you haven't been following the news, don't worry. It's not too far off. Cyberpunk 2077 was coming out November 19th. Now it is pushed to December 10th. I know it sucks. A lot of people were really looking forward to it. I know some people personally that took off work to play this game, so that is a massive bummer. But the way I look at it is that there's more room to catch up on other games. And maybe this little delay will make the game a little bit better. According to one of the head honchos at CD Projekt Red, it was still just working to get the current gen versions of the game running properly. Apparently the PC version is ready to go, running up to snuff. Uh, that's what we know right now, but we do know that there are other delays. First, uh, Destruction All-Stars was delayed earlier in the week. This was going to be a launch game for the PlayStation 5. It is now pushed into February of next year, and they're going to make it a PlayStation Plus game, which I think is probably going to work out a little bit better for this title i was excited for it wasn't really sure if i wanted to pay 60 70 bucks for it new if it's just like this little multiplayer thing but i think it looks like it's creative and fun and i think putting it out this way in the future might give it at least a standing chance a standing chance is that the a fighting chance if you're just standing, you're just... Then on the other side of the fence, Ubisoft has delayed some games. First off, Far Cry 6, which we thought we were going to get in February of next year, has been pushed. Along with that, Rainbow Six Quarantine, the follow-up thing to Siege, is also delayed. We didn't have a date for it other than just kind of 2020. Now that has been pushed. Both games, Far Cry 6 and Rainbow Six Quarantine, are now moving into the next financial year for Ubisoft. So that's going to be between April 2021 and the end of March 2022. There you have it. And interestingly enough, Ubisoft did specify that this was in the context of, of working through a pandemic and all the social distancing measures and work from home type of stuff and logistics. It seems like a lot of companies are facing these issues. I do think it's a miracle that the next gen consoles are still coming out, but the games, that's the bigger issue. So of course that leads to my big question for you guys. Joker me this. Which of these games were you really looking forward to the most? Are you bummed that they're delayed? Especially Cyberpunk. Are you willing to wait a couple weeks? Can you handle it? Are you a big boy? Let's talk in the comments. Now in some other more negative side news before we get to the fun stuff. Uh, EA did a big uh-oh. I guess for some people this is actually a positive, but EA is now finally officially on paper being taken to task for loot box stuff in FIFA's FIFA Ultimate Team Mode or FUT Mode or FUT Mode. That's what I call it. <laughs> Mode? No, FUT. Oh. F-U-T. FIFA Ultimate Team. Oh. FUT. So we've talked about this in the past, but in court rulings, the, the Netherlands has cracked down on EA and their, their problems with loot boxes, specifically in FIFA. And now the action is that EA is going to be forced to pay a fine of 500,000 euros every week that the loot boxes are still available for sale in the game. That's a lot. That's, that's quite a bit. For us Americans over here, that is actually $583,000 to Euro conversion. So that's, that's quite a bit of money. And uh, that is going to be a, a combined two different fines that they are going to be paying with the way EA is structured in Europe. So there you have it. If you are somebody that has wanted to see EA get their time in court and uh, have issues with this type of thing, they are now literally going to have to pay money and cough it up and you know companies don't like to lose money so i expect them to flip the switch and turn this stuff off pretty soon is that going to break ultimate team i don't know personally i don't really care but i'm curious to hear what you guys think also this week we got a nintendo direct with a surprising amount of stuff i feel like we haven't talked about nintendo stuff in a while but this was a pretty interesting nintendo direct uh two big things right out of the gate is hitman 3 and control are available are going to be available on switch but through cloud streaming that is the only way to get games these powerful on this platform i guess or that was like the, the quickest solution for it i think this is pretty awesome but i also do want to point out i've seen a lot of other concerns on social media where you know every time a big new game comes out they just 
put a streaming version of it on the Switch. Not everybody is going to be able to take advantage of that, you know, with different internet. I have crappy internet, so like, I don't want this to be the quick fix for every game. I still want proper ports, if you ask me, but that's what we got right now. Also, No More Heroes 1 and 2 is now available on the Switch, like today, which is pretty cool. So uh, th th those games are wild. I definitely highly recommend them if you're looking for something Really weird and different. There's also a demo out for the new Hyrule Warriors. Bravely Default has a release date of February 2021. And yeah, some pretty exciting stuff. Some cool stuff from Nintendo, considering uh, lately it's been a little bit more quiet on that front. Pretty awesome. Next up, this episode is brought to you by Omaze. Their initiatives have been great. We've been talking about them in the past, and now they're working with Comic-Con Museum. Donate $10 and you're entered for the chance to win $30,000 towards your dream home arcade gaming setup. There's an insane amount of possibilities here. You can surround yourself with arcade machines, cool furniture, tons of games, and all kinds of stuff. You can really live the dream in your own house, especially if you're an arcade junkie like me. And with supporting Comic-Con Museum at the same time, it goes to a really fun cause. They're dedicated to raising awareness of and appreciation for comic book and similar type art forms. They do outreach, they have public education programs, and have a goal of setting up a 21st century education center where students can learn robotics, filmmaking, creative writing, and just cool creative stuff. The world needs fun, positive stuff like this, especially in these times, and they've got their work cut out for them here, so they need your help. So to potentially win a $30,000 home arcade setup of your dreams and support Comic-Con Museum at the same time, go to amaze.com slash gameranks. And thanks to Amaze for sponsoring this video. Thanks for that. Now let's talk about some PlayStation news. We got a lot of stuff this week. Uh, first of all, some new Miles Morales PS5 gameplay, if you're into that type of thing. There's a little developer documentary type thing breaking things down. Uh, we also got a look at the Spider-Verse suit uh, from the film, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It is awesome, but not only is it cool, uh, but they have actually changed the way Miles animates and swings and plays in the game with a cool effect, kind of replicating the on-screen frame rate. If you're familiar with the movie, that kind of jumpy feel to it. In the game, perfectly, it translates, and it's really, really cool. <laughs> it's amazing. When I first saw it, and I saw him jump and start swinging, I was like, ah! That is apparently an effect you're also going to be able to like add on to other suits in the game if you just like that vibe. Personally, I think it just fits that suit and that alone, but uh, also there's little on-screen effects like pow and pop when you're fighting in combat. Really, really impressive stuff, and I am so looking forward to this game. I'm completely biased because I love Spider-Man so damn much, but check out the video. It's linked in the description with everything else I talk about this week, including some spicy new... Demon Souls gameplay. Holy hell, it looks awesome. It looks really, really smooth, visually impressive, and thankfully for a lot of people, the Demon Souls you expect with the AI and the logic remaining completely the same. They have confirmed that. I know I'm asking you guys a lot of questions in the comments, but I am curious, especially for gauging interest for videos. If you're picking up a PlayStation 5 and you only have time for one game, is it going to be Spider-Man or Demon Souls? Or something else? Let's talk. Linked in the description below also if you are just looking forward to new PlayStation things or just new games in general. We also got a cool little breakdown and some really interesting art for Final Fantasy 16. A very exciting looking Final Fantasy game that I'm, I'm pretty pumped to get my hands on, not gonna lie. Also linked in the description below, I just wanna put it down here to be fair, give credit where it's due. Anthem is fixing and retooling things and they've started to break down some of that. If you are one of the few people who are sticking with the game and you are curious, ain't gonna judge you, check it out. Uh, but on the other side of games that have gotten a second chance and really, really knocked it out of the park, we also got a next generation trailer for No Man's Sky that breaks down uh, the updates the game is getting for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. And it's all that goodness, that 4K, that high frame rate, better lighting, and it's gorgeous. Also, if we're talking about games as a service, we would like to link the new Destiny vid doc. I know there's a lot of Destiny heads who watch this show, so check that out if you haven't already. Also, we linked the uh, release day or the launch trailer for Watch Dogs Legion, just because that did come out on Thursday. We are playing it, and I will have a before you buy video up this weekend pretty soon. Following that up with another game releasing soon, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Uh, we got the system requirements and all that good stuff, and the, the biggest bombshell is the storage. Now, if a lot of you guys have Warzone on your console or PC, you know how ridiculous 
uh, the, the install size is. And now we know Black Ops Cold War is just as obnoxious with everything, man. So for recommended with all the game modes installed, that's 175 gigabytes of hard drive space. And if you want all game modes and you want maxed out RTX, if you got a really good machine, that's going to be how much? 250 gigabytes of hard drive space. This is unacceptable. That sucks. Doesn't it just feel obnoxious? Doesn't it feel like they don't care? They don't care about your hard drive space. Like they're just like, screw it. These Call of Duty kids, they don't care. I'm probably reading it too and too much. I've had a lot of coffee, but I just don't like when games are really that big. When I'm not like a technical wizard, but I feel like that's obnoxious, right? Just when you stack it up to other games. I don't know. That's just me. Probably making a mountain out of a molehill anyway. I know a lot of PC folks just have massive hard drives and arrays anyway, but uh, rant over. What? Also, in other news, because I feel like more and more we talk about uh, the constant merging of video game with other forms of entertainment like television and movies, and the newest announcement is an Assassin's Creed live action series on Netflix. Netflix just the other day announced this. Apparently, Ubisoft people are going to be executive producing it, which isn't really too much of a surprise. But it is officially in development, and I think that's pretty interesting because I'd love to see Assassin's Creed get another chance because it can be really interesting. The movie was weird. It wasn't terrible. It was a little boring, and I got some things wrong. But I like I didn't think it was a total disaster, but like a second chance could be so good. Also, I've said this before, but I think Netflix has proven to be fairly competent with a lot of this stuff. The Witcher Netflix series I absolutely love, but I really, really love the Castlevania series. Ooh, lordy. Uh, so I'm hoping for the best here. All you can do is just hope things turn out good, right? Honestly, if there's a cool-ass Assassin's Creed Netflix show that gives us Assassin's Creed in time periods that we've all wanted to see in the games, but they're still not giving us, like, feudal Japan or even uh, going after, like, the cool, like, weird Russian winter stuff that they did in some of the comic books... Give us that. Give us all of it, please. But that's some of the news this week to get you guys caught up. You're filled in now, officially. So we want to hear from you guys down in the comments what you're thinking about all this stuff. PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X. It's heating up. So for market research, for research for us making more videos, we want to know what you're into, uh, what you're planning on picking up. If you're picking up something, maybe you just play on PC. Let us know that, too. Uh, what launch games are you looking forward to? What are you going to do with these things when you first get them? Cyberpunk, are you bummed about the delays? Were you really looking forward to Far Cry 6? And, of course, Assassin's Creed live action. What time period do you want to see? There's so many questions. There's so much things we could talk about in the comments, so let us know. We'll be down there as much as possible. Things do get, get a little chaotic, though, so like I always say, hit me up on Twitter and Instagram and YouTube at Jake Baldino if you want to. From one joker to another, I really hope you guys have a fun and safe Halloween if you're celebrating. Be careful, be safe, uh, and uh, that's about it. Thanks again to our sponsor. That's omaze.com slash gameranks if you do want to check that out, but... Thank you guys for watching. I'm Jake Baldino. You can click the like button because it legit helps us out. I'm here every Friday. Catch me on the before you buys. Pizza's on me.